Hey y'all, today we're here to visit Expedition Bigfoot in Blue Ridge, Georgia. If you visit the museum with a dog, you can create it here. That they may be close to extinction before we can prove they exist. Unfortunately, to science. In anthropology, we investigate those things which are problematic to us by looking. We need a piece of the body. Nothing else will be accepted. I think that there are many other ways of proving the existence of something other than killing that particular thing that you're trying to prove exists. My preference would be to locate a hunter who was shot and killed one. And perhaps because he thought he killed a valuable animal or a peculiar human, he might not have said anything about it. But if he would come forward, perhaps we could examine the place where he killed it. We might find a few bones, then the whole thing is settled right there. If we don't find such an old kill, then the only alternative remaining is to kill one now. Why add more controversy to something that's already controversial? All right, let's go watch the movie. In the forest near the mouth of the Great Snake River, there lived a Sasquatch. The Sasquatch lived alone. The only company he had were the characters he cast in the shadows of his fire. He longed for the company of the humans, but they had always been afraid of his kind. One night, a girl from a nearby village ventured near his fire in the forest. She was enchanted by the shadows dancing on the cliff wall. The little girl enjoyed the story so much that she returned to sit by the fire each night after everyone had gone to sleep. For a few hours, the Sasquatch was happy. One night, the girl did not arrive. The Sasquatch set off to the village to see what was wrong. As he drew near, he heard the girl crying. Her father had scolded her for leaving the village at night. 
girl saw the Sasquatch at the edge of the trees and ran to him. Just as he gathered her up, her father and the other villagers woke to see the Sasquatch holding the girl. The Sasquatch was afraid and ran with the girl into the forest. The villagers set off after them. The Sasquatch ran well ahead of the villagers. It began to rain. Though his arms embraced the girl, branches scraped her fragile skin and ice cold rain soaked her. The thunder frightened her to tears. The Sasquatch continued to run, afraid of what might happen to him if he was caught. They were both far ahead of the hunters now, and he knew he was safe. But when he looked at the girl, he saw that she was not safe. He saw the scratches on her skin. She shivered from the fear and cold. The girl did not belong in the woods. She belonged in the village. The Sasquatch knew he would have to bring her back. He turned to walk back to the villagers. The hunting party surrounded the beast, but the father called them back. The father drew near and saw Sasquatch's face. He knew that the beast did not mean to harm his daughter. The father asked the rest to lower their weapons and to return home. The father told him he could never see the girl again. He would have to hide from the humans so that no other children would follow him into the woods. The Sasquatch knew this must be so. That is why the Sasquatch must hide from humans today and never again share their wonderful shadow story. About three o'clock got on and uh, I was sitting there and I was facing uh, to the north and uh, my deer stand was located about a mile and a half down Old Oregon Road and off the main highway, secondary highway. And what I would do, I would park my truck halfway down the logging road and I would walk in the rest of the way because I didn't want to drive my truck down. And... After the museum visit, we stopped by Panorama Farm Market, or we call it the Apple House, to get a fried pie and an apple cider. Oh, that's, never mind, that's cane sugar. I mean, that's cane sugar. Today we chose a blackberry pie with an apple cider. 